Hello, 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 Dr. Robin McKay here. Welcome to your weekly weather report and your pep talk for April 18th, 2022. If you're not a member of the Actualization Zone on Facebook yet and you want to be, head on over there. If you type Actualization Zone into your search bar on Facebook, it should take you right to it. It is a private group for intuitive and intelligent women leaders. Most of us are in tech, healthcare, spiritual entrepreneurship. The thing that holds us all together is that we are both intuitive and intelligent. So we have access to our spidey senses. And that's what I love to talk about with all of you while I'm in here is tuning into the kind of the energetic weather, the influences that are operating behind the scenes that might be creating some challenges for you this week, might be creating some energy, some momentum for you this week as well. So that's why I'm here. I'm happy that you're here with me. If you're watching live, say hello in the comments. If you are watching the recording, let me know, say hello so I can say hello back to you. So this week, when I was tuning in to what's kind of coming up this week energetically for us, there were three things that my guidance made very clear to me. One is that it really is time to start tuning into intuition. For so long, intuitive and intelligent women, particularly in those fields that I mentioned, healthcare, tech, fintech, anything that requires a lot of thinking and has placed primacy around intelligence, logic, reason has created the conditions for those of us who are intuitive to send our intuition underground or to put it in the back seat. So for example, the way that shows up for a lot of the people who I work with and for myself earlier in my life anyway, is that you can know something and you can know for sure, a hundred percent that the thing is the case, but unless and until you have a rational, logical explanation for why you know that thing, as though your inner source of authority is not enough, it's not a qualified or acceptable reason to give to your colleagues, to your coworkers, to your clients. And that has been going on for millennia. We are at a place now in the world where we're really actively pursuing the, the restoration of intuition to its rightful place as the sacred gift that Einstein wrote about long ago. He said that intuition is a sacred gift. Reason is its faithful servant. We've created a culture that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. My work for the past 22 years has been about bringing intuition back into its rightful place as a sacred gift. And what's very clear right now for our community in the actualization zone, for those of you who have been working with me for a while, you know this too, that the more we can pay attention to and start leaning into our intuition, the easier things are going to get for us. The more graceful things are going to get, the more capable we are of not just meeting, but exceeding our goals and to actualizing our heart's desires. So this is a week to really begin setting the intention to restore intuition in your own life and looking at ways where you might gaslight yourself around your intuition. You know, you get a spidey sense about something and then you tell yourself, oh, I'm just making it up in my head or it doesn't make good sense or it's not logical. We don't need anybody outside of us to do that. For us, we are quite good, quite adept at gaslighting ourselves. And one of the directives this week for you is just simply stop gaslighting yourself. If you get a spidey sense about something, write it down. Write it down and watch it play out. See what happens. Collect your own data. Rather than over relying on data and science and research that's outside of yourself, why not turn your intellect inside? Give your intellect something to do in your own life which is to track your intuitions, which is to wonder about 
what happens? What is the result of this intuition that I've received? Maybe it's to go a different direction to pick up your kid from daycare. Maybe it's to reach out to a former colleague about a new position. Who knows? But you won't know. And you certainly won't know the results of that unless you are willing to do your own research. And this is a case. I know that there's a lot of that do your own research thing going around in our culture right now. But this is a case where I would say, turn your attention inward and let yourself be your own case study. Let your, let your intellect, your reason, your capacity to collect data and analyze it, turn that in on your intuition, not in a harsh way, not in a critical way, but in a highly curious, open-hearted, open-minded way. And be in, be in a state of wonder about how your intuition is actually working for you, how your intuition is guiding you, how your intuition is giving you shortcuts, how your intuition is giving you creative ideas, new strategies, new solutions to simple problems, but also to some of the more complex problems that I know some of you are working on in your fields. Right, so that's that's the first part of what's coming this week is activating, aligning, intending to really listen to your intuition. The second theme that came up this week is around chaos. Nobody likes chaos, at least that's what we tell ourselves. And yet Friedrich Nietzsche, the philosopher, once said that chaos gives birth to dancing stars. So there is a gift in the chaos as well. And so when and if you encounter your own form of chaos this week, it might be chaos in your thinking. It might be chaos in your personal life. It might be chaos at work. It might be this week in America, today in America is tax day. Maybe it's chaos in your taxes. Wherever that chaos is, see if rather than contracting from the chaos or getting mad at the chaos or getting frustrated with it or getting afraid of the chaos, see if you can just lean into it a little bit. Allow your intuition to play in the chaos and see what comes forward as a result of that. In other words, engage with the chaos in a way that maybe feels foreign to you. Maybe in the past when you had experienced chaos, the next thing you want to do is duck and cover. Maybe you want to avoid or confront. Maybe chaos brings out your, your fighting words. Whatever approach you've taken to chaos in the past, this is a really good week to practice doing it differently. Maybe it's chaos on your desk. I think if you saw my desk right now, I've got sticky notes rocks. My, it's not too bad, but it is. There's, there's some stuff here that I'm glancing over at right now. And my approach in the past might have been to just avoid it. I'll take care of it later. Maybe my approach this week is, hmm, maybe I'll take a look at all those post-it notes that are, that are kind of scattered over there and see what they have, see what wisdom comes forward just by approaching the chaos on my desk a little bit differently than I would have in the past. All right, so first theme, lean into your intuition. Second theme is when chaos shows up, which it will inevitably do. We all experience chaos in one form or another at some point. Lean into that, get curious about it, wonder about it, and see what transpires as a result of your curiosity rather than from your contraction. And then the third theme that arose and will arise this week is a call for mindfulness, a call for your presence. One of the things that I teach often when I'm working with leaders in tech, in healthcare, anywhere where you're problem solving, often whenever we have something that shows up in our lives that we don't like, that we're unfamiliar with, that, or that somebody else brings to our doorstep, we opt first to problem solving. We just go right into problem solving mode. And the practice I want to bring to you this week is to practice presence over problem solving. So 
again, somebody's going to bring you something this week, some kind of problem, some kind of challenge, some kind of frustration, rather than leaping into action, going into problem solving mode. The invitation here is to be present. Another word that keeps coming forward, right, is curiosity. Be curious about it. And do some reflective listening rather than problem solving and going right into, well, here's what you do or here's how you handle it. Just sit with the person for a second or a minute or a few minutes even and reflect back what you imagine somebody like them in that position might be feeling. Don't tell them how they're feeling, but say something like, wow, if I were in that position, I might feel really frustrated. Or gosh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That must have you really worried. And ask it in the form of a question. Don't tell people how they're feeling because you don't actually know. But in reflecting back and practicing the presence of just witnessing whatever emotion has come forward for them in that moment, giving them the gift of your presence, there's something that transforms in those moments that they can see that they're not alone, that they are being witnessed, and that maybe somebody is here who can actually help them, not necessarily in the way that you would traditionally help a person or traditionally problem solve for a person, but they actually can start accessing some of their own internal resources. Their inner wisdom can really be guiding them once you've witnessed all of the superficial emotions, energies, frustrations that have come forward. All right, so those are the three themes, intuition, leaning in, getting curious about chaos, and then practicing presence over problem solving. I hope you found this weather report helpful. I think that one of the most important things that we can do as intelligent, intuitive leaders is to take some time early in the week to set the tone for the week, to set the tone for how we, we desire things to go, not to, so that we strong arm them or white knuckle into them into being, but rather that we open up an invitation for our unconscious, for our intuition, for our creativity to come forward and fill in the blanks based on what we've envisioned or what we've intended for ourselves, for our families, for our colleagues, for our projects, programs, and for our lives. If you found this helpful, I would love it if you would share this weather report with some of your colleagues. Let them know about it. I think that one of the greatest gifts that we can give each other are just those grassroots this thing is really good for me. Maybe you'll like it too. Those connections can be so powerful and so potent in this time. So we're not meant to work, walk this time in the world by ourselves. We're meant to be shoulder to shoulder with others who are looking toward the future and who are actively creating the world that they most want to experience rather than waiting for somebody else to tell us what to do or to embed ourselves in somebody else's version of the future. Neither one of those are best options for those of us who have intuitive hearts and open minds. So with that, I will complete for today and I look forward to connecting with you soon.